Hey people and welcome back. Um, in this video I want to talk a little bit about um, ragdoll physics for uh, characters. So for this I'm gonna um, just quickly mention that I decided to go back to 4.10.1 uh, of the engine version because I had some issues with the animation blueprint and um, yeah, didn't want to struggle with that. So back in 4.10.1. So, I uh, will create a new third person uh, character uh, example here uh, and call this Ragdoll Test 101. And I believe this is going to be fairly uh, beginner oriented um, in the first video, uh, but I plan on making a few ones because I think it's going to be too much to cover in one video. Uh, so let's see. Um, Inside our, our um, third person character blueprint here, um, we will set up a key for that and I'm left handed so I keep remapping all my keys over and over so I'm just gonna quickly import my uh, my settings which I saved on my desktop here, there we go, um, not that one, did I move the wrong one, no, here it is, okay, so uh, we have all the standard stuff here and then I have my interact um, button key uh, mapped already here. So the idea is I want to be able to press a key and then uh, put him into ragdoll. Uh, the super simple way of doing this is going to drag out the mesh and then say uh, set simulate physics and that's basically all you need to do to run around and then press a key, it's gonna turn to ragdoll and fall through the ground. The reason he does that is because when he uh, simulates physics, um, he doesn't um, use the co co uh, capsule, uh, collision capsule anymore, but he's gonna have his own physics uh, um, collision. And that means that we need to change the, the mesh um, collision presets from character mesh to a uh, ragdoll. So if we just do that and play again he's, and press the key, he's gonna turn to ragdoll just like that. The thing is we can just still uh, walk around like nothing happened. Uh, so our capsule is still alive it seems. And um, that's kind of a problem. Um, we could try to freeze this uh, collision capsule, but the thing is if I um, jump mid air and kind of slide down something, um, which I didn't really do this time, but uh, let's uh, see if I can uh, go it here. Yeah, well our collision capsule is kind of, uh, I think I'm going to turn it on so we can see it. Um, it's easier to explain. So I uncheck hidden in game and play. So to make this easier to look at, uh, see, I'm gonna press F2 to turn and in, go into unlit mode. So if I um, come running here and I go ragdoll, and we just, just disable the, uh, the movement control, our capsule is gonna stay up here, but the character is gonna stay down here. And we want the character, uh, the capsule to follow him down here. So that's kind of uh, the first thing we're gonna uh, look into. Okay, but as I said, this is a super simple way of doing it. Um, I ran into quite a few issues with this, so um, I um, think I'm gonna um, I'm gonna explain a little bit more in detail why I do this. But uh, for now, just uh, bear with me and assume that uh, this is just as good as uh, a, a way to do it as uh, this super simple one. So I'm gonna drag in the mesh again, and then instead I'm gonna uh, use set all bodies um, below physics uh, simulate physics this one uh, and set, set them to simulate and here it asks for a bone name and I'm gonna give it um, um, make little name give it uh, the name of our pelvis like that and then I also want to say that it should um, blend in 100% uh, so there's a, a blend value you can uh, set so it and defines how much the physics should take over and um, how much uh, the animation should um, influence the character. So set all bodies below physics blend weight you can set here 
and um, gonna set this to one, which means it's gonna be completely uh, simulating physics. And uh, if we play again, we can see that this is actually just the same. We still have our ca collision capsule just running around like nothing happened. Um, but that's something I will take a look at now. Um, the way I um, found a way to do this is maybe, I don't know if there's a, another uh, more uh, correct way to do this, but um, this is so far the way I found uh, how to handle it. And um, let's see, the uh, thing is, um, we don't want to be able to um, control the capsule, the location of the capsule. We want the, the capsule to be controlled now by the, the location of our mesh because it's lying around floating somewhere um, um, in his f dead physics state, hopefully. Um, so from our event tech, I'm just going to say that instead of um, uh, we can move it around. I'm gonna get um, socket location for our pelvis, and then uh, the reason I, why I choose this is uh, you could could choose the the route also uh, or something else, but I this is just what I've found out to work. Um, so I'm gonna set this um, location. Of the collision capsule component, um, I'm gonna set that to this value here. Damn it! Gonna move this around a little bit. Okay, but the thing is, we don't want we always want this to happen. We we'll only want this to happen if we um, if we went into uh, um, ragdoll. So I need a variable to keep this. So I'm gonna make it one called in ragdoll. And once I press this key, I'm going to set this to be true. So in before here, I want to add a branch and check if I am in rectal. And so if I am in rectal, um, the position of the, of the collision capsule is going to be driven by the position of the mesh itself. So if we play this and hit play, we can see that now that the collision capsule uh, stays with us. The thing is it went a bit down to the um, to the ground so the reason for that is because now the pelvis is on the ground and if we look at our um, example here and this will be different from uh, whatever you set up but the, the thing is if we open up our where is it the view uh, window viewport this one. Um, so if we take a look at the mesh here, we can see that he has an offset location of uh, minus uh, 97 centimeters. So I probably want to add something to this so I get the correct position of my capsule. So I'm gonna add plus vector plus vector and say I want to add 97 units to this. And that's what I'm gonna say my collision capsule should be. So if I run up here and jump out and go into ragdoll, you can see that now the collision capsule stays above his um, pelvis. So if I want to revive him, uh, let's call it that. Um, let's move that out of the way. Actually, let's um, let's put it up here. Don't need it right now. So let's say I want to revive him. I want to do kind of the, or at least this part here. I just want to make sure that I set him um, not to simulate anymore. Uh, and this is obviously going to require some animation to make this look really good. Otherwise, it's just he's just going to pop up again. And then we also want to make sure to set this uh, back to false so that he can now again control his uh, collision capsule. Oops, forgot. Um, the mesh, the bone name. Okay, you can just use this one. Okay, so back in here, and I forgot something. Um, not released. Okay, 
is I want to use a flip-flop. Okay. And from this one, I drag out this one. So the first time we click it, uh, it's going to put him into rectal, and the second time I click it, it's going to put him back. So that's the idea here. So I'm going to run up here, jump out, and go into rectal. It's going to sit here, and I press my key again, and now he is... We have a little problem again. So let's also take a look at how we fix that, um, because uh, that is a fix to that as well. Well, I haven't really figured out 100% what's going on uh, when that happens. Um, but as far as I can tell, well, the capsule gets detached uh, from our mesh, apparently. So, um, and it kind of makes uh, sense because now, uh, now the mesh is kind of in control of itself and simulating physics and all that. So, yeah, well, it does make sense. But the thing is, we need it to be reattached here. So, um, we just use an attach to. Um, Attach to. Uh, what the? Okay, mesh. Oh, okay, that's weird. Okay. So um, when we go back again into a normal um, running around state or whatever you want to call it, we want to take uh, the mesh and we want to reattach it to our collision capsule. So I'll drag in the capsule here. And uh, we don't want to put that anything in there, but we want to keep him um, snap to target, keep world scale, I guess. Yeah. So let's see how that looks. Um, so we jump and we go into ragdoll and we want to go back again. So now he just pops up in there, but and he's kind of walking sideways now. And the reason for that is uh, again found inside the the mesh here, or if we check a look at the viewport, you can see uh, besides um, being positioned a little bit lower, uh, minus uh, ninety-seven centimeters, he's also rotated minus uh, ninety degrees. This is the same as minus 90 degrees. So we want to make sure to do that also when we uh, reattach him. So we get the same um, starting point as uh, when we uh, he, he was detached. So drag out the, in the mesh and then set relative location and rotation. And we want to give it exactly the same as it had in, inside the viewport. And could type. 270 is the same, but all the minus 90 is, is also um, working. So, and uh, now when we go into Ragdoll and we hit our key again, we can continue. All right. So that is, I guess, uh, the first part of this um, uh, mini tutorial of um, um, Ragdoll. Um, mechanics uh, for beginners. Um, I'll continue working with this in the next video and see if we can add some more uh, extra stuff to this. Um, I hope this is going to be interesting. Okay, so uh, bye for now and see you in the next.